special today comes from Ayrson Park where Middlesbrough face the might of champions Liverpool. It's the very game that Teesside fans must have dreamt of not so very long ago when the Borough were trying to battle their way out of the third. This afternoon Middlesbrough play Liverpool the league champions. We've got an international cast on view at Ayrson Park this afternoon. There's John Barnes the scorer of a vital World Cup goal for England in Albania on Wednesday. Gary Gillespie with just one league game behind him since October, but he starred in Scotland's World Cup triumph against France. And Ronnie Whelan was at the heart of the Republic of Ireland's creditable draw in Hungary. In all, eight Liverpool players answered their country's call this week, while Middlesbrough's Stuart Ripley represented the England under-21s and responded with a goal also in Albania. Back into the Middlesbrough goal today comes Stephen Pears. It's basically the same very promising young side which was promoted last season. Just two additions this season, Mark Brennan from Ipswich in midfield and striker Peter Davenport at £700,000 from Manchester United. Liverpool haven't been injury-free all season and today Hanson, Rush, Mulvey and Benison are again ruled out along with David Burrows who picked up a stomach bug away with the England under 21 this week Steve Staunton is the replacement today's referee is Gary Applin from Kendall well we always endeavour to bring you even better coverage of English soccer and today a new mobile camera appropriately we put down our tracks here in the northeast so close to the home of railway at Stockton and Darlington. Liverpool kick off, sporting their away strip of silver grey. Middlesbrough after sporting suntans because they've been away in Bermuda for a break. There was no league game for them a week ago because of the international preparations. And they feel that's just the tonic that they need to take on the champions. With Liverpool looking to make a late charge here over the last third of the season to try and retain their title. Brennan takes the game's first free kick. And it's a goal kick. Peter Davenport played his first game for Middlesbrough in the away fixture against Liverpool back in November. Middlesbrough were beaten 3-0 at Anfield. Steve Pears missed four games. Initially lost his place through injury and then Kevin Poole Played in the side. Ripley. Foot raised by Brennan. Not to the referee disliking. Houghton. Aldridge. Bid. Inside Pallister. Looking for John Aldridge. And Cooper committed himself across and Aldridge feels that he should have had a penalty. It was an unusual claim in a way because it seemed that Aldridge had lost the ball initially. Sometimes those players with their reactions give the very best clue. You can spot those who really feel deep down that they've been wronged and Aldridge had that look about him then. Well, the ball was involved in the tangle as well and maybe that's why the referee ruled in Middlesbrough's favour. Was Cooper possibly lucky then. all the World 
Cup results in the week. Good for the domestic game in England. just shoved Aldridge there was speculation last season linking that Gary Pallister with a move to Liverpool Liverpool are very anxious to hang on to him and they do have tremendous team spirit here with this generation of young players growing up together and climbing up the league together as well from the third to the first Barnes on two and beat them. Aldridge, great touch for Beardsley. Miscued shot, then miscued by Cooper. Pairs rescued it for Middlesbrough. The eye-catching aspect of that Liverpool attack, the work of Barnes down the left, and then a delightful touch by Aldridge to set up Beardsley. But the goals really haven't been going in for Peter. And Barnes has run it away from Pallister. Aldridge up with him. Barnes goes the direct route and hit it straight but not very hard. At this stage last season, Liverpool had won 19 and drawn the other five of their 24 games. Uh, looking threatening with Beardsley and he's threaded it in. After 19 minutes, Peter Beardsley suddenly found himself away through the centre. Pairs came out, but the shot was very well angled just inside that far post. So Beardsley regaining some of his sharpness when it comes to sucking the ball away in front of goal. He's had such a barren run, a run that's really cost him his starting place in the England side. He was only used as a substitute again in Albania but back in his native northeast here he's turned the game for the moment Liverpool's way oh, the lines are flagging and Liverpool dropped off very quickly at the moment the ball was kicked but Beardsley led the bounce better than Pallister held it there from Staunton and from Barnes Houghton has made a terrific run from right to left and Barnes used McMahon Beardsley carrying and harassing tactics from Middlesbrough but they can't get the ball Whelan scuffed an attempted shot McMahon does rather better and that couldn't have been too far away Steve McMahon still looking for his first league goal of the season, which is quite remarkable when you think he got nine last season in the first division. Some of them in that style. Ripley. This is more like it for Middlesbrough, but he was running into a very congested area with his head down. Houghton. 
of interesting pass and a very good one too. Beardsley taking on Mowbray. He's slipped in. Beardsley. It's 2-0. Followed in by Ray Houghton. Thirty-six minutes gone, and Liverpool's superiority being confirmed here at this stage of the game. Beardsley having scored the first, setting up the second for Houghton. Slipping Mowbray, hit hard and low across, and Cooper and Houghton going for it together. It's 2-0 to Liverpool. They beat Middlesbrough 3-0 at Anfield back in November. That was comfortable, and it's comfortable so far here at Ayrton Park. By his own admission, Ray Houghton hasn't been at his very best for Liverpool in recent games, so he will appreciate getting on the score sheet today. Bruce Riach and Colin Todd will already be rehearsing, I'm sure, what they're going to say to their team at half-time. Barnes beaten by the bounce. Remember Middlesbrough going into this game with a very good home record. That's to be recalled when you evaluate Liverpool's first-half performance, which has been full of authority. Barnes. Although Liverpool have had to play into a blustery win, they've offered a classy first 45 minutes here, embroidered by goals from Peter Beardsley, and Beardsley setting up the second for Ray Houghton. Middlesbrough with a great deal to do in the second half at Ayrton Park. At half-time, it's Middlesbrough nil, Liverpool 2. Well, Middlesbrough fired up from the dressing room, I'm sure to address their problems quickly in the second half. And if they could snatch a goal quickly, I just wonder as the match goes on whether the efforts of those World Cup wanderings from the Liverpool international stars in midweek might stop them in the later stages. Perhaps Bruce Rioch will be hoping that will happen. But his team really need to show more firepower. Problem of an English winter, but this has been an exceptional one. The sun has shone, the temperatures have been mild, the football has gone on without any real interruption to the schedule. And Liverpool are going on here like the Liverpool of old. Hasn't always been that way this season. They've got 13 league games left after this one. With Liverpool, they're quite capable of winning the lot. And what they do have over the run-in, of course, is plenty of experience of the pressures of chasing a championship. But here's Ripley, trying to change the picture here. And Garobola, <laughs> with one of those one-handed efforts, not quite the best he's ever done. He dropped on the ball, though. Once it had rolled from the grass. Here's Beardsley. And that would have ended any doubt. And the chasing work of Aldridge and then the uh, loss of bearings by Mowbray were factors there. Liverpool 
have been away on holiday. It's away, they're reveling in their task, putting the passes together again. And Houghton, the goalkeeper's hesitated, and Houghton could have done better. Again, it wasn't an easy ball to hit running away from him. Bobbling on, on a firm pitch. But Pears was uncertain in his positional work. And had Houghton connected cleanly, he could well have made it 3-0. Kerr. He hasn't seen many victories in midfield in the tussles for Middlesbrough. Seen a rock like performance in that quarter from Liverpool. But really, the extra edge has come further forward from Beardsley. Nicol! Oh my word, it nearly went in! Houghton and Pez finally get the grasp on it. A touch of inspiration from Nickel in trying the shot to catch out the goalkeeper. He certainly did that. Hamilton. Nickel back defending. Brennan. Slaven. This is Parkinson. Middlesbrough do have a lot of players forward. It's Liverpool's throw. Well, Steve Pears from Steve Nicholl was in great difficulties. An instant shot from Nicholl with the wind at his back from how Middlesbrough should have done more of that in the first half. And it was tucked onto the post by Pears after the fumble. And then he plucked it from Houghton. Paul Proudlock comes on for Mark Brennan. Whelan, Barnes, that was delightfully weighted to McMahon. Now the Middlesbrough youngsters getting something of a lesson, but not short of spirit. Kerr finding Cooper. There just seems to be no way through for them. You can't say the same though about Liverpool. They've been carving out chances at will. And this is one for Aldridge. That he has taken just so he extends this remarkable run scoring in a seventh consecutive game for liverpool it looked as though he had too much time as whelan played him through superbly says held him up blocked it the first time and off the post and in fact in off parkinson in the end feel that they uh, should have had a corner well the uh, identity of the scorer is a matter of interpretation there really I'm sure Aldridge will feel it's his 18th goal of the season well Gary Parkinson was chasing back to try and stop Middlesbrough going three goals behind and he's got in behind the goalkeeper well, it probably wouldn't have gone in without the touch of Parkinson. Whelan deflected off Pallister for a corner. They're so greedy at Liverpool for honours. It's meant as a compliment, put like that. 
and they're still greedy for goals here. Three 0 up away from home. McMahon. Pass Hamilton ahead of Cooper in the way. McMahon. Uh, showing too much of the ball to Whelan, but prepared to scrap for it. He earned his money, Paul Kerr. Ripley, have look. And the ball with the shoulder. Ripley. Oh, and Gillespie decided not to go for it, inviting Grovola to make the move. He was just a little late to accept the invitation. he arrived in time nasty ball in for the goalkeeper to deal with Bruce Grobola hasn't been on a losing Liverpool side this season and still Liverpool aren't satisfied Pallister that might well be a foul by Beardsley but more than any one player Peter Beardsley set the tone for Liverpool in the first half and his teammates were very quick to follow the example. Far. Aldridge reversed it beautifully for Steve McMahon. 4 0. It's becoming something of a rout. It doesn't flatter Liverpool. They're worth the margin by which they lead. And who says that Aldridge is just a goal scorer? That was a terrific ball through. And McMahon bided his time and then planted it past Fairs. So McMahon does get his first first division goal of the season and he's had to wait 11 months since his last goal in the league four in total this season the other three of course in cup Bar. It's all over, a thumping victory for Liverpool, really inspired at the outset by Peter Beardsley. He set up the second for Ray Houghton. John Aldridge came away claiming the third, although the final touch went in off the defender. This Liverpool must have looked such an attractive proposition when you're battling to get out of the third. The reality is so much harsher. Beardsley and Houghton scored the goals in the first half but really killed off the game and then John Aldridge a slightly fortunate one and McMahon with a great finish rounded off the day for Liverpool they now eye the leaders sound out the warning they're not finished yet for this season Middlesbrough unfortunately will be looking over their shoulders increasingly now towards what's going on down the bottom of the first division appreciation from the crowd here for a fine display by Liverpool the score cannot be argued with. Middlesbrough nil, Liverpool four. Bruce, after a game like that, I know it's not really easy to say anything. I just suppose you met Liverpool at their very best. Well, they're capable on the given day of uh, beating any side comprehensively. And I think they did that today. Um, for a spell, we were competing with them early in the game. But then the first goal went in. And I think once the second goal went past us, then uh, it was just a matter of them keeping possession and building up and and uh, and pushing the game forward against us and what you come up against you come up with a team playing with 10 internationals uh, who have a great deal of international experience a great deal of european experience good movement good support and uh, on the day they were outstanding and i don't think you can complain about that um, you don't like to be second best in life you like to be the winner and uh, we don't like losing here but sometimes you have to stand up and be counted and say that uh, we came off second best and they were the better team and they won and they proved it today and uh, they're an outstanding team they're the one team in the first division 
in the country that are capable of going from now until the end of the season and winning all their matches. Peter, people keep writing off Liverpool, but they, all, as usual, do their talking out on the pitch, don't they? Yeah, that's what we tried to do, and I think today we give a very professional performance. It was a classic Liverpool performance in many ways. You really must have been very pleased with it. Yeah, obviously we're pleased to come and win 4-0 at any club like Middlesbrough. You know, because to be fair, they've got some good young players, and uh, I think in many ways they're a bit unfortunate on the day. You had a great first half yourself, really setting the tone with that goal. We can have a look at that one now. Typical Beardsley goal, you might say. Yeah, well, the left-back played a great ball into me, and uh, Tony Mowbray had to check his straight, and Gary Pallister just came across. But I was lucky enough to get me shot in just before he tackled me. Now, you were very, very alive and kicking today out there. How much of a G up to you, really, is it being left out by England in midweek? And even the Liverpool place is never certain, is it? No, well, that's right. It's never nice to be left out. But uh, having said that, Bobby Robson's got such a hard job. You know, he's got so many good players to play. And uh, obviously, everybody in the North East knows Chris Wilde. And I was just unfortunate that Chris kept me out on Wednesday. But hopefully we've got Albania in a month's time and hopefully I can get a bit of form and get back in the setup. Now you have said you've got enormous respect for Liverpool and also for the work your own players have done over the last couple of years. But they do now face another test of nerve and character for the rest of the season, don't they? Well, we understand that, but then so do the other clubs down there. I mean, we're in no, difficult, no different position to uh, some of the other clubs, West Ham, Newcastle, Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, Southampton and so on that are at the uh, low end of the division and uh, we'll just keep working, we'll keep battling away, we'll keep playing to see if we can get enough points to keep us in the first division and that's really what we want to try and do. Well Bruce more than ever will be anxious about Newcastle's performance today, they of course faced another vital relegation game at home to Queen's Park Rangers, Newcastle hoping to keep that, keep that recent good run going. We can now have a report on that match and the rest of the North East football news. So that 2-1 defeat leaves Newcastle in dire straits. Their only consolation being that none of their fellow threatened species won either. Luton and Sheffield Wednesday lost. Charlton drew at home to Southampton, as did West Ham to Coventry. Middlesbrough, though, are dangerously near the relegation zone. So a depressing day both on Tyneside and here on Teesside. But plenty of time for both of them, though, to pull away from the relegation zone. Plenty of time, too, for Liverpool to make up the ground right at the top of the first division. Because here at Ayrton Park, I'm afraid, for Middlesbrough, it was a lesson from the Masters. Goodbye.